uh, so they're going to be married in January. Is that pretty so? Okay. And she's she's been posting all kinds of stuff on that figurative way. He said he's the only totally. Dad's mom talking about that's a different kind of moms and dads love it's to the girl um and also I had on my list to do this and then I got the text from Olivia to announce um Dota and Lauren I have on stairs but he proposed to her about a month ago. She accepted. They're they're going to be uh, getting married sometime. It's just they're just locked in. They've they've contractually they both signed on the dotted line and they haven't set a date. I'm not sure. Anybody have a testimony this morning? God's good. Wonderful. All the time is. Yes. Anybody have a testimony here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's do it. Proclamation. Let's do that. You no, know, when everything seems like it's going wrong and going bad, yeah. my God is sufficient. Yes, he is. And he will meet every need. We've got some water problems going on in our house, don't we, Mr. Jacob? And anyway, we're believing that God is going to give this man knowledge. <laughs> The knowledge right here, the knowledge Lord, of fixing bringing. that water problem. And okay. we have a huge leak that's going on, but we know God is sufficient. He's going to meet yes. the need, and we're going to find out where that leak is, and we're going to stomp the devil's head in the name of Jesus. And it's not going to cost Amen. us no money because we're believing God is our source. Yes. And I praise you, and I thank him, and I give him glory because he In is advance. worthy. He is worthy. You want to, um, it's okay to... Debbie's been going through a uh, ongoing battle for several weeks now, and her eye, her left eye, has been giving her fits. Doctors are saying all kinds of unpleasant things. They discuss it. So, how many knows when they when they say unpleasant things, it's not time to get fearful. It's not time to get afraid and get all get all aligned with the enemy and agreeing with him. And you know, you just you just. She said while well, the doctor was saying, well, it could be this, 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 she's going, nope. <laughs> and I, I really appreciate that, nope. But uh, they, she did have some blood drawn. Bring some clarity to it. So I know that Andy has, and Teresa, a lot of stressful situations lately. Anybody else uh, afraid to ask this? Anybody else been going through a season of really difficult times? And it's, is this going to end? Why has it even started? Anybody here? Yeah? Yeah, I see hands going up. I'm surprised you two that are back in school are saying, my grades, my grades. So, <laughs> Jacob's hands up. All right, let's, uh, why don't we pray for all this? Jacob, would you pray over all this? Thank you. 
Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand up. In honor of his word, I'm in the book of John again, uh, chapter 17, verses 16 through 19. Jesus has been praying over uh, the disciples, and he's, at, he's praying to the Father. He's praying about the disciples. And <clears throat> I started it much earlier, but I just decided to start. He's talking about the disciples to the Father. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Have you ha as you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Father, I want to thank you today that your word is alive and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. And I pray, Father, that through your word, uh, said that you purge, um, you said that you, your disciples, they were made clean, they were purged by your word, and I ask, we just ask you to cleanse us, purge us, and to purify us here in this house. Lord, let it be so, and let us leave this place walking in alignment with the heartbeat of heaven, walking in agreement with your word, being submitted to your will, and be, being more and more and more conforming to the likeness of your son. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let all the saints of God declare, amen. All right, you can be seated. Last week we were talking about, I was talking about a coin, a three-sided coin. And I don't know that there is something like that exists, but anyway, we're pretending it does. And this th thing has three sides, passion, purity, and power. And that was the message that I had last week. I'm going to kind of press that a little bit further this week. Um, and if you look in here in John 17, Jesus is speaking to the Father, and he says, he says, as you have sent me, even so have I also sent them into the world. Okay, there's a sending going on. Jesus was sent, now we are sent. Amen? Okay, we're carrying his word, his presence, his glory. Then it says in verse 19, for their sake. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. Does anybody find that interesting that the, 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 the Son of God says, I sanctify myself? That I sanctify myself? We're going to look at that word sanctify in just a minute. But I want to just point out, there can be no sending without a sanctifying. Amen? There has to be a sanctifying before there is a sending. And he's saying, send them, I'm, I, or sanctify them, I am sending them, let them be sanctified. And there was, there's a prophet in the house that gave a word to somebody, and I thought it was a phenomenal word, really cool. And it was a dream, I think, and in this dream or a vision. Now, we've all been guilty, I would dare to say of this, that an individual was, was handling a baby and was caring for the child, the baby, but they had just changed the diaper, and they had got, excuse me, poop on their hands, and they didn't clean their hands, and so when they were handling the baby, guess what they got on the baby? They got poop on the baby. And so, how many knows that we can do that? If we're not clean, as we put our hands or interact with or talk to other people, we can actually contaminate them because we're not clean. Amen? And that's really, really important that we learn that and we, and we go with that. Um, Jesus said, I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified. It's kind of like you know, the if and then thing. Have you all ever heard of you know, the if then? If my people, then I will, right? And it's like Jesus is saying, if I sanctify myself, then they will be sanctified. Now, if there is an if and then, then you need to look at the reverse of that. If not, then not. If we don't, then he won't. If we don't repent, he won't respond. He won't hear our prayers. Are, you, are, we, are we got, is that clear this morning? Okay. So, we know that it's not only for ourselves. If we sanctify ourselves, or as we sanctify ourselves, as we grow closer to God, it's not just for us. It's not 
our training, our growth, our giftings, our talents, our purity is never for us alone. And, and I know I shared this a couple weeks ago, but in Mark 6, 20, Herod, it said, Herod feared John, John the Baptist, knowing that he was a holy man. He was holy. And that even though Herod, there was no evidence that he repented and served Jesus, that just by accident, people will come in contact with an encounter with the living God when we are walking in holiness. Amen? When we have separated ourselves and, and drawn, he, he says, Sup, uh, says, touch not the unclean thing, come out from among them, and then I will receive you. Be ye separate. So we, we know that's a very important thing for us to learn that. And the word sanctify is the Greek word, it's hagiadzo, and I know you're probably not going to remember that. If you remember hoghead, maybe that'll help. Hagiadzo, it's the, it's the Greek word hagiadzo. Well, Jesus said he was hoghead or something like that. Hagiadzo is the word. And that is the word to sanctify or, or sanctified. And it's translated several different ways. Hagiadzo is translated as to consecrate, to dedicate to God. And what is dedicate? To fully surrender, to fully give over to. Uh, to cleanse, to purify, to make holy. That's hagiadzo. It, it encompasses a lot of stuff. But the end result is clean and right standing with God. How many likes the feeling of being clean before God? Did you know you can't be lukewarm and be right with God? Did you, did you know that? You can't be half-hearted and halfway, half in. You can't be, you can't be doing that. But it's interesting, to me that, it's interesting to me that Jesus, the holy one, the sanctified one, the hagiadzoed one, said, I sanctify myself. But you know, we've got to remember that Jesus was fully God, and that, in that aspect of him, he was fully purified, fully pure. But he was a man. And he walked this earth, and he was tempted on all points as we are, yet as without sin, right? So... He was always in this purifying mode of just staying. It's not that he had to repent of sin, but he had to stay free of sin. And he was constantly on that, in that, that realm of walking above it and walking in victory and walking in authority. And he never let his guard down. He never, never uh, got into a place of having to say, oh, God, I really blew it. Father, I really blew it on this one. He never had to do that. But for our sakes, he sanctified himself. If he sanctified himself... For the apostles' sake, should we be sanctifying ourselves for other people's sakes? Yeah, we must be doing that. And it's an ongoing work of Holy Spirit. Uh, how many knows our mind needs some hagiadzoing going on on a regular basis? We need some cleansing. We need some purifying. We need some stuff. Paul the apostle, the greatest, possibly the greatest man of all time, Charmaine, he said, I die daily. Wow. That is some serious hagiadzoing going on there. That purifying, that dying to the flesh, that giving over of yourself to the Lord. And to see an example of this, 1 Corinthians 7, 14, talks about the unbelieving husband is sanctified by his wife. And it says that the unbelieving wife is sanctified by her believing husband. Did you all see that? And it says, else were your children unclean. Now, that's kind of that's scary. It's, it's hopeful. It's scary to think that, you know, if you have... If you have uh, ungodly if both parents are not saved typically what can you expect the kids to be not saved that's just they just tend to flow with that but if you have one person and steve talked about that one person one individual that'll stand against the flow i don't care if you're the woman living in a home alone with an unsaved man unbeliever the bible says that he is sanctified by you, by your godly conversation, by your lifestyle. That the, I don't know, understand how that works, but I believe there's some kind of a covering. And he is, he, now there's a day when he has to stand before God and answer for himself. But I believe that, that uh, our children, if it, if it weren't for us in our home, our children would be totally lost. And so it's, it's the influence that we have of walking in this uh, holy lifestyle. And I, I want to just talk just real quickly. You know, we all, we've all seen holiness, holiness movements. And I respect those people that are in that. I really do because they believe strongly in what they do and the way they dress. 
and the way they wear their hair and facial hair and all that stuff. That, you know, that's fine. But I really believe, you know, if you want to do that, that's fine. But it must be also the working inside, in here and in our hearts. Amen? And we've got to be people that are, that are set apart. And just like, uh, well, on the bus, was it Friday? Yeah. In the back of the bus in the middle school, man, I heard some of the most foul language. It was horrible. And I just, like, stopped the bus. And it was like, you know, it was horrible, foul from seventh graders. And I, and I got up, and I walked to the back, of the shut, you know, shut the bus down. I walked to the back of the bus, and I said, listen, guys, we ain't doing that. We're not, we're not going to be talking like that on this bus. And I said, the very next time I hear this, I'm calling your mama, all of your mamas, to make sure that you have permission to talk like this. And they go, oh, you don't need to do that, sir. All of a sudden, I'm sir. I'm Mr. Tom, but now I'm sir. And they, but they, 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 they see that, and it's not just me, it's just a lot of people just don't like that word, those words, but, uh, but they see there's a difference. Holy influence like leaven. God flows through pure vessels. And you know, God always has a way of arousing and waking up his church before a new wave or a new advancement in the spirit. Aren't you all glad about that? Um, in Acts 17, 30, it, it, I'm going to kind of expand the scripture a little bit here. It, it really is talking about one thing, but I'm including something else in that. It says, previously in times past, God, in, in man's ignorance, God winked or overlooked at man's sin, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Okay, there, there comes a place in our walk with God that it's like he says, no more. That's got to go. Something that maybe we have tolerated for X amount of time, however many years or days or months, he now commends us to repent. He now says, that's got to go. If you want to come farther in me, that's got to go. And he will deal with us about the things that in our life that are influencing us, whether it be movies or music or people we hang with or whatever it is. And he will draw us out. And sometimes it's very difficult and very painful. I remember my age is getting, is, I remember when I first, I was, that was my life, was my music. And uh, the Lord really got a hold of me and I took all my eight track tapes. <laughs> I was in my early 20s, and I had a box of 8-track tapes, and I had to load them all up and throw them away. And I thought about selling them, but I didn't have eBay or anything like that back then. So I thought, you know, this is sinful. How can I sell it to sin to somebody else? So I didn't sell it through Italy. All right. Okay. God uses prophets and godly men and women to, to awaken the church. And I believe that he is doing a work in the church even today. Uh, he awakens the Levites. He awakens the priests. Let's look at First Chronicles fifteen twelve, and this is First um, Chronicles fifteen twelve. And this is where David was bringing the the ark back to the to Jerusalem. It had been with the ungodly. It represents the presence of God. Uh, the ungodly. It was in the home of. Uh, it just was, it was in a home of one of the Jewish people, but it wasn't in where it needed to be, in the centerpiece of Jerusalem and centerpiece of their civilization. And so he's getting ready to bring it back. And he gets to the uh, Levites, he talks to the Levites, and, and uh, he says to them, You are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both you and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of the Lord of God of Israel into the place that I have prepared for it. If you want to be instrumental in ushering in God's presence, we must be a sanctified people. We must be. If we want to usher in his presence, we've got to do that. And we've got to do it like we've never... When we, when we decide that we're going to do that, we have to do it not like spring cleaning, but we need to do it as a lifestyle with intensity and diligence. Amen? And let's be seeking God's heart. And if you ever ask him, Lord, is there anything in my life that displeases you? Show me so I can deal with it. Okay, that's where he's bringing the presence of God in, into the center of, the, uh, of Jerusalem. Now, we're going to look at another one here in 2 Chronicles 29, where the, uh, 
The nation had gotten so deep in darkness. It was just horrible, horrible, horrible. They had gotten deep in darkness and fallen away from God. And we were down in, uh, in Alabama, the youth conference last year. The, was it Micah? Was that his name? He preached a word that, out of this, and it was such a good word. Um, but anyway, we're going to look here. The darkness had covered the land. The people of God had become disconnected from the one true God. They had departed from the fountain of living water, and they dug for themselves cisterns to hold water, broken cisterns that did not hold water. And so we're going to start here in verse 1 of 29. And it says, Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old. That's a pretty young king. But uh, Josiah, I think, was 6 when he started. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David, his father, had done. Okay? So he is, he's got a heart after God. And he calls... The Levites together, he realizes there's some things that need to be corrected in the nation. He realizes that something needs to be fixed. Does anybody look around our nation and recognize something needs to be fixed? Something needs to be fixed. There's some stuff spinning out of control. He speaks to the Levites in verse 5, and he says, Hear me, you Levites. Sanctify now. He didn't say, you know, you can drag this out till next week. Now. Sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. <clears throat> you know that this thing of thinking about filthiness in the holy place, that's kind of, it's just, it doesn't sound, it sounds horrible. Filthiness in the holy place. And I, I looked up the word filthiness, and, and please, ladies, guys, don't, this is not a nasty thing, it's just, but this is what it means. It's, when it talks about filthiness, the root word for this is menstrual cramps. Yuck. Used. And they're contaminated. They're contaminated with flesh. And he said, this is what's going on in the holy place. Filthy. And we see this same kind of a teaching in Isaiah 64 He's talking about they had gotten so far away from God. He said, we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. It's the exact same thing. Filthy rags. And how many knows that, that the, the, the filthy stuff's got to go? Anything that, some things that we think are okay, he says, I ain't okay with that. I'm not okay with that. Y'all looking at me like, wish he'd shut up. Second, Second Corinthians 7 1 says this. Seeing as that we have all these promises, let us cleanse ourselves, this is King James, from the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. You guys got that? Let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. I know that I am. I'm looking around the place, and it's like David Wilkerson said he was, he was over some foreign country, and you know David, man, he's holiness, God fearing, wrath of God. You're going to burn in hell. Don't play those cards. Don't watch that TV. You're going to burn forever. Don't turn it on or you'll burn forever. You know, he's just that kind of a thing. It's, he's, he could be, he could have been, he was strong. <laughs> and he said that he, he was preaching overseas. He said, I was just sitting there looking at him with these blank looks. And he's, and he talked about internet pornography and all this stuff. And, it, and he said, well, he talked to the, the head man that set the conference up. He said, What's, why do the people just seem so disconnected? He said, well, Brother Wilkerson, they, they're really poor people, and they don't have internet. None of these people have access to anything like you're even talking about. So it's not even an issue with them. And so he's like, oh, that's what you talk, talk about preaching to the choir, people that already got it together. We hope. We hope. We hope we do. Amen? All right. Have we sought God lately? Have we asked him about our lives? Okay? Okay, he said, verse 6, our fathers have done evil. They've trespassed. They've done evil now to the Lord. They've forsaken him, turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord. And turn their backs. Verse 7. Listen to what's going on in verse 7. Not, verse 6 is horrible. But in verse 7, it says, And they shut the doors 
uh, of, on the porch. They put out the lamps, and that's one of the things they were instructed. Never, never let the lamp go out. Never let the fire go out. And they let it go out. And they have not burned incense. What is incense uh, symbolic of? It's prayer. It's the prayers of the saints. So nobody's, there's, there's no light. There's no truth being preached. There's no prayers being prayed. And it says, and they haven't offered any burnt sacrifices. People had quit sacrificing. We are what? Living what? Sacrifices. People were living according to the flesh. People had gotten away from God. It's, it's scary to think that, that these people, and guess what? The Levites were in that. And he said, it's time to sanctify yourself. It was desperate times. And he says in verse 11, now this was pointed out by Mike, and I love that. It was so cool. He changes his stature, his stance here in verse 11. He's 25 years old. He's got all these elders and Levites and priests and everybody. And he says, my sons. He speaks to them as their father. And he's really, he's 25 years old. He speaks to them as their father. He said, it's not time for negligence. If there's anything that will get us in trouble, it's negligence. We may not participate in sin, but we can be neglecting about dealing with sin or compromise that is sn snooked, snuck into our home, sneaked into our home. We can be negligent about things, things the Holy Spirit. We just this little, you know, he'll, he'll give you a little nudge, and you're like, gosh, I didn't feel real good about this. But we don't do anything about it. We just keep on, you know, we don't deal with it. Yeah, okay, you all don't have a clue what I'm talking about. I'm, I know I'm talking to myself. All right. But he, he speaks to them as sons, and he said, in verse 12, it says, the Levites arose. And in verse 15, it says that they sanctified themselves. And they sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the, of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. Then they cleansed the house, they purified it, and it took, overall, it took eight days for the house and 16 days for the total cleansing. How many knows it's a process? Some things that we do just don't happen in a moment. We've allowed some things into our lives, that, in our homes, that just need, they need some press. We need to put the press on to get rid of it. All right, does anybody want to step into the life in, a life in the spirit that is full of power? Anybody? Come I am... I'm on to that, okay? Look at, we got two more little illustrations here, and then we're going to close, all right? That's the word you all were looking forward to. <clears throat> the Hebrew nation stood on the edge of entering into the promised land. All these people standing there ready to go in. They send, the, they send in the 12 tri the spies. They're right there on the verge of going in. Ten come back with fear-filled, faithless, foolish reports, they're saying exactly the opposite of what God said. You know, when we speak opposite of what God says, we're in trouble right off. When we start speaking contrary to his heart or his will, we're in trouble. We're in serious trouble. And they came back speaking the wrong thing, and guess what? The whole camp did too, said, we're well able, Joshua and Caleb. We can take this land. We can go in and do this thing. God is able, and they're, they're like, let's do it. Let's do it now. Let's, get, let's march across there right now. Everybody pick your swords up. Let's go. And, but they all, the, the camp believed the unbelievers. <clears throat> so we know the story. They spent the next 40 years what? Going in circles. You know, have you ever lived your life, you feel like the last three months you've been going in a circle, or last year you've been going in circles, or the last five years you've been going in a circle, and you're ready to break out of that circle. You know, you're ready. That, that, the, in the, there's talk, Clay Nash was talking about when we went to see him down there in Evansville. He was talking about circular things, things that go in circles. And he was talking about an eddy along a river. An eddy is a little pool of water off to the side that just goes in circles and circles. And he said he was hunting down there for several days. And he came to this pot, place and there was this log that just kept going in circles in this little eddy. And he went on his way and hunted and all that stuff. Came back a couple days later, that log still sitting there going in circles, spinning in circles. It's going to take a flood to get that thing up and out of there. But, you know, there's, we can do that too. But, you know, that circular thing is very demonic. That the, the, the enemy has this, uh, 
image of a, of a, ta- a s- snake with its tail in its mouth, and it's, it's a circle, circular image. Very demonic when we get caught in circles and we're just not going anyplace. Amen? Here they've been going in circles and everybody's died. All the unbelievers are gone. They're, yeah, we're waiting for, un- for Uncle Ebenezer. He was the last one of the unbelievers to die. He's now, he, was, he was 50 when, when we disobeyed God. Now he's 90. So we're ready. He's just, just kind of limping along when they're walking in circles. We're waiting for old Ebenezer to die. Uncle Ebenezer, he just kind of like, we're like, yay, let's go, baby. We're going in. And so they get up there. They're ready to go. And God's like, nah, 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 not quite ready. We think we're ready. We think we've done all the cleansing, all the dead people, the dead, deadness gone, dead, dead dogs are gone. We're ready to move, ready to take the land. And God says in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, Joshua is speaking to the people. And I love, I just love the word of God. They're getting ready to advance. They're getting ready to go in, getting ready to do a new thing. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. You know, you think that you're clean because they died. Them unbelievers, them, them losers, them no good sons of skunks that caused us 40 years of hassles out here. The 20 year olds who, who, didn't get, who didn't die, they're now 60. They're my age, and they're ready, to, they're ready to move on with life. I mean, can you imagine starting your life at 60 right now where I'm 60, just starting? They have nothing, and they're ready to move this. Get in there. Let's do this thing. Let's make this happen. They're ready to go in. And God says, well, we need to deal with something. You need to, you know, they're dead, and we've been pointing fingers at them for a long time now, but now you, you and you and you, you, all of you, all of us, we need to sanctify ourselves. Before we can take this land, before we can go in and do a new thing. Are the lights? Are they? I see heads going up. I keep kind of peripherally, I see things flickering. Probably a squirrel up there going to kind of lightening up. And cord in his mouth. <laughs> I found a squirrel up there once, a couple of last year, I guess, and he was just this flattened out fur with a little tail, scraggly tail on it. That was it. The bones were gone. <laughs> For the man or woman of God who desires intimacy with the Lord, you want to go into that place that's bursting with pride. There has to be, you want the miraculous power of God displayed in your life, there has to be sanctified. We must be sanctified people. Look what he says here. He says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. After we stop and cleanse ourselves, we're going to see signs and wonders. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so cool? If you really want to see signs and wonders, we have our part to do, and then you've got your part. God, God's got, we got our part, and then God's got his part. Amen? All right, and this is where I'm closing. This is my, this is my favorite part of all of them. Okay, this is in, of, of all places, Leviticus. I was having a ball in the Old Testament yesterday. Leviticus. Chapter 20, you got to remember, Jesus started this thing off saying, I sanctify myself so that they might be sanctified. If you're watching my internet today, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about legalism. I'm talking about a relationship with God. Uh, in, the, in the New Testament, it says more than once, be holy for he is holy. Be holy for I am holy. And it's, it's, not, a new, it's not a new thing. It's not, it's not an old thing. It's not for old people that that go to these little tiny churches and, and there's hardly anybody there but just a handful of old people. It's, it's for us today. It's for young people today. It's for all of us. Okay. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. He's talking about a lot of the occult and witchcraft and all that junk. It's got to go. Get all that junk out. That's the obvious stuff. And then he gets down here in verse 7 and he says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore... And be holy, for I am the Lord your God. How I many knows that that ought to be enough reason right there? Just because He's God and He says to do it. <laughs> it 
Has anybody been watching any TV lately and noticed? Even if you're not watching, you can kind of hear it in the background where I'm so-and-so and I'm running for Congress and I'm so good and I'm so wonderful and you'll just love me if you'll give me at least four years of your life. And, you know, I'll just I'll d- treat you so many ways you're bound to like one of them. I'm just wonderful. I'm the best thing you've ever seen. Please vote for me. And by the way, my name's Joe Schmo, and I approve of your they, all, they always say that. My name is Joe Schmo, and I approve of this ad, right? Uh, now, can you imagine when we stand, stand before God and we have gone through this thing of, of this cleansing of our attitudes? You know, we can have bad attitudes. Bad attitudes are bad attitudes. And we can have unforgiveness towards somebody that hurt us. God's like, we need to deal with that. Let's, let's take care of business here. Okay, if we don't forgive, what he say? What he say? We won't be forgiven. <laughs> that's right. All right. So that's his words. That's not mine. <clears throat> if I had wrote the Bible, I'd say a few things a little bit differently, and so would you. But I'm glad I'm not God. I'm glad he's God, and I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I'm Tom, and he's God. All right. But look at this. The next verse. And you shall keep my statutes and do them, for I am the Lord. Who sanctifies? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. minute. Verse 7, he says, sanctify yourself. And then in verse 8, he says, you do what I tell you to do. You obey my word. You keep my word. Because I am the Lord. I'm the one who sanctifies you. It's almost as if like that politician says, I approve of this. It's It's like God saying, you know, when we go through all the things that we need to do and deal with the things that we need to deal with, and then God and, and the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, and then when, then when we stand before God, he says, I approve of this deep cop. I approve of him. He's my son. Well done, good and faithful son. And there is a place, Charmaine, there's a place, June, there's a place in God where... It's not outside rules and laws. There is a passion from within that says, that song, Leland sang it, I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. That song, did that song touch anybody? I mean, we've played it a lot in the prayer meetings. I I just want to be where you are. That's where I heard it in the prayer meeting. I want to be where you are. He says, you know what? You want to ascend the hill of the Lord, you've got to have your heart. Come on up, come on up. The door's open, but ah, 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 ah. there's a cleansing laver down there. You need to take care of business. Yeah, yeah, it needs, you need to take care of business. You need to, to reinstate some things that have been laid aside, like the incense, or you need to start praying again. You need to start. How many thinks repentance is a good thing? Man, I was raised in an environment where it's like, I think they're repenting. That, you know what that means, don't you, Martha? Been sinning. Been some sinning again. I can see it on his face. That's what I'm, I've been telling you about it. Finally up there, finally listen to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. He's up there getting things right. About time. <laughs> and we kind of criticize people for going to the altar, and we think, oh, everybody's going to look at me, talk about me. You know what? I see somebody on the altar. I think they're hungry. They're wanting more of God. They're wanting to step into that place of of knowing him and intimacy with him. And I love what Joshua said, sanctify yourselves. We're getting ready to go into a place that God is going to reveal signs and wonders, miracles. He's going to show his glory. We just need to get sanctified. That's that's all we got to do. We just got to carry the trash out. That's what the Levites did. They went in. It really didn't take a rocket scientist. They said, That doesn't look like temple. Let's get rid of it. Let's take it out of here. That doesn't look like temple stuff either. Let's get rid of it. That is, that looks like somebody's been using the bathroom in here of all things. Let's clean it up and get out. It doesn't look like temple stuff. And so we 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 start cleansing the temple. And then that which is left looks like God. Isn't that awesome? It's it's really not that hard when we're so hungry. We're so hungry. It's just, it's like, God, show me, show me what I need. 
I'm telling you, church, we've, we've, it's, it's, it seems like there's sometimes in our lives we just, it feels like we've come to an impasse. And it's like, eh, I just, oh, I just need to grow. I want to get farther. And God's like, yeah, well, I've been waiting for you to just, like this. Now, good deal. Here's what we need to do. It's called sanctification. There's things that we just need to deal with. You haven't been, haven't been dealing with them. Days to day. And you're like, oh. Okay. I, don't, I, I never liked getting whipped with a switch. <laughs> anybody, ever been, anybody ever here been whipped with a switch? I know you have. His dad cut a tree down to whip him because he was hiding in the tree. He was up there hiding out in it. His dad cut the tree down to get to him. It fell down, and it fell down with it. Then he beat the life out of him. <laughs> <laughs> If he had just come down and said, Dad, I'm sorry, he probably got beat anyway. <laughs> from, what I, from what I understand of Dad, but um, <laughs> I never met his dad. But I heard he had a hot temper. He could blow hard. He'd, he'd just blow off real quick and real hard and then beat the life out of kids, and he was happy camper again. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing now. You wasn't then. <laughs> He was like, he was, I believe he started praying in that tree. He learned, learned how to pray. I heard something about a rapture when I was a few years ago in church. Let it happen right now. <laughs> he started praying. God, I really, I'm, church, I'm not, I'm not standing up here trying to browbeat anybody. I sense the Lord, I sense Holy Spirit saying, come away, my beloved. I want you. I want all of you. And I want you to lay down your frustrations. I want you to lay down your worries. I want you to lay down your cares. I want you to lay down all the things that are concerning you. And I just I want your mind un, uncluttered. I just want you. And, you know, I'm learning to just come and to sit in the Lord's presence. That's hard for me. I like to pray. And just to come and sit and just listen is very difficult. Some people do it easy. They're like, oh, this is so easy. Oh. And we were talking Wednesday night how the Moses went up on the mountain and God called him up. Six days. He just sat there. Six days. Nothing was going on. He sat there and there's this cloud. And he's like right by the cloud and he's like, Sitting there for six days. God didn't say a word to him. He just stayed. God said, come up. So he came up. He just sat. And on the seventh day, God spoke to him out of the cloud. I think if he had gotten up and left earlier, like the people in the upper room, what if they just left? This is... Phew. I got stuff to do. We got crops to get in the ground. <laughs> we got yards to mow. I got a bus to drive. I got this. I got that. I got water leak to fix. I got go to the doctor. I got blah, 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 blah. And he's just like, hey, 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 hey. hey. Just pull aside. I honestly believe, church, that as we pull aside after the Lord, that we're going to see things. Kind of like in Joshua 3, 3, 5, where he says, sanctify. You're going to see, you're going to see, Teresa, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to see the hand of God made my. Anthony, you are too. We're ready. I'm ready. Alyssa, do you want to see it in your school? Would you like to see people honestly just in love with Jesus, treating each other kindly, and being loving, and Honoring to one another. I'm finished. I'm just kind of talking. <clears throat> you all stand to your feet, please. <clears throat>